All right, so it's time for Cloudy with a Chance of Learning. And today we have another special segment where we take a little bit of a field trip out to the Woody Museum. We've learned so much the last couple of weeks from the Woody Museum, from some of the uh, dinosaur exhibits they have there, and then also from uh, one of the Fiesta exhibits they have. And today we're going to learn about something different. And on the show with us today, we have Helen. And Helen, how are you doing today? I am great, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having us. And Helen, tell us a little bit about what you do at the museum. Well, I am the Chief of Engagement, and so a large part of this is uh, that we are um, an educational institution. So as you can see, we have a lot of kids coming to the museum. Uh, during the school year, of course, we have thousands of school children that visit us. Um, of course, that changed with the pandemic, so we're doing a lot of the uh, remote learning as you are doing here with the, this website. Nice, very cool. And so what exhibit are we going to be checking out today at the museum? Today we're looking at an exhibit called King of Beast, which is an art exhibit. John Banovich, a world famous uh, artist and conservationist, who is very um, committed to conservation of African lion. And so we are very honored to have him here at the Witty. And we've also put a, a Texas uh, connection because these are all members of the cat family. And we have quite a few uh, wild cats that live in Texas, which we'll talk about here in just a bit. Uh, but it's a great exhibit. It's very educational and uh, it's very beautiful as well. Nice. And you said it's an art exhibit. So is it a lot of paintings or are they photos like that? That one image behind you that you had just a moment ago, was that a photo or was it a painting there? Uh, these are all actual uh, paintings. Uh, he has very um, spent many, many years studying the African lion and its natural habitat and has quite some realistic uh, scenes of lions that he has seen over the years. Wow. And Helen, I'm going to bring this full. So uh, give me one second. Let me pop this up full because I want to make sure everyone can see this. Uh, this is an actual a beautiful painting. It's uh, called Partner. Uh, it's oil. Most of them are oil paintings. That is just amazing. It looks so realistic. It looks like a photo that was taken. It does. He's a very, uh, very excellent artist. And uh, many of his paintings are... Uh, bought by people all around the world, and so some of these are loans uh, that the uh, owners have given us permission to use in our exhibit. Very nice. And so I also noticed something in the other room. It looked like you had some more things other than just uh, some paintings, too. I saw maybe what looked like a mountain that, or a lion that was uh, mounted. We do have a couple of mounts. Uh, we have our first one, which is the mountain lion. Uh, this is a native a uh, North American mammal uh, that we have in Texas. People may have heard of them. Uh, mountain lions are not um, what I would consider common, but they uh, do have a very good established habitat in West Texas. And they are actually expanding their territory. Um, over the last few years, they have expanded into Central Texas uh, and uh, South Texas up towards the coast. Wow, very cool. And you know, this is the perfect timing to be talking about this exhibit because actually on Friday, this past Friday, we headed out to the San Antonio Zoo and we learned all about their lions out there. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good way that we can expand our knowledge there a little bit even more about lions. So when somebody comes to check out this exhibit, what else are they going to see, uh, see around there? Like uh, what, what can they expect to learn from the exhibit rather? Well, this is a, this is a, a very interesting part of the exhibit, and as I, it's a wildcat's a family tree. And if you look at it very carefully, you will see at the top are the um, the six current uh, specimens that live in the world: um, jaguars, African lion, which came off one side of the family tree millions of years ago. And then the domestic cat, mountain lion, bobcat, and ocelot, which are another part of the family tree. So a lot of people um, wonder why we call mountain lions lions when they're, when they're not technically lions. Um, and that's because the early explorers 
who came to the Americas saw them and thought they looked enough like the African lions. They call them lions, but they're actually very, very distantly related. We also have these great um, skull casts of some of our uh, current live uh, specimens that we have around the world, but also uh, extinct species. Particularly this number four, which was the American lion, which lived here two million years ago. And then oh, we wow. have the saber tooth cat. Many people are very familiar with that. They've seen them in cartoons and such. But they were here five million years ago, smiling on. Wow, very cool. And what what kind of cats do we have here in Texas that are kind of displayed in this exhibit as well? You said that we had the mountain lion, but are there any other cats? Not in this exhibit, although we do down in our Texas wild exhibit, which is one of my favorites at the Whitty. We do have a mountain lion, bobcat, and ocelots. Um, ocelots are a very rare uh, species found in Texas. There's only about 100 to 120 left in the state although they're very common in Central America and Mexico. So are they, are the ocelots only found mainly in Texas when it comes to the United States? Because that's something that I haven't heard much about. I'm, I'm actually newer to Texas myself, and um, I uh, moved here from Mississippi. We had bobcats back in Mississippi. How different are those two kinds of uh, cats? Well, they're actually very, they're very similar in terms of size. They're both very small. But uh, bobcats are what we call generalists. They will, they can adapt to a variety of habitats. They can eat a variety of food. Ocelots are very specific in their habitat type. So you'll only find them in the lower Rio Grande Valley where the brush is really thick. They are very secretive. Wow. We could spend a whole, I could spend a whole day talking about ocelots. Let's do that another time. Nice. Well, you, you were talking about the paintings earlier. I want to get back to that a little bit. You talked about how they were oil paintings. Some of the, yes. uh, some of the kids that we may have on today, they may not understand what that is. What makes, an, what makes it uh, an oil painting? And why would somebody paint like that rather than, let's just say, with a brush and a little bit of paint strokes or, or some paint that they would just buy at the store? Could you tell us a little bit more about that kind of a painting, rather? Well, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not an artist, but, um, you know, there's different mediums, different kinds of paints you can use. This mm -hmm. much I do know. There are different kinds of paints you can use. So oil paint, oil based paints are just one type. Um, and it, it really, if you look at this painting really closely, you can see a lot of detail with the grass blades and with the fur and, you know, just the detail that he comes out with. Um, I don't know that they're all oil. Maybe they all are. Um, but that's just a style of painting. Nice. So what's, what's your favorite part about the exhibit? You know, it's hard to say. One thing about this exhibit um, that we haven't talked about is really the conservation message. Um, it's very committed to the conservation of African lions and wildlife in general. But to, uh, and here at the Witty, we are very committed to that conservation and land stewardship message. And so when people come to this exhibit, I hope that they will learn something about lions, learn something about the cats we have here in Texas and North America, but also come to understand and appreciate how important conservation is across the world. Because all of these animals, particularly the lion, play a very important role in our ecosystem. And so we got to take care of the lions because that will help take care of the ecosystem and take care of our environment, which is so important to, to our general well-being and the health of the world. All right, excellent. And what's the biggest challenge right now against the conservation of lions? What's the biggest thing that you all face? Well, I'd say, well, I'll speak for Texas um, and our mountain lions. Uh, and our other cats. It's um, habitat fragmentation, fragmentation, habitat encroachment, um, the expansion of urban areas. These animals, all these cats in general, require a very large amount of territory um, to find enough prey to survive, to find mates to breed, to uh, increase their population. So habitat is probably the biggest factor. Um, 
African lions are probably saying it's quite the same. Um, you know, just population growth has encroached on their habitat that they've had for thousands of years. And so learning that balance of how to have a, have a healthy human population and a healthy wild cat population is, is very important. Nice. And so you said you had mentioned earlier that mountain lions can travel uh, a long way, and and they've kind of encroached. That well, not encroached, rather, but they've moved from being just in uh, parts of uh, western Texas. I think you were saying earlier, all the way over to now central Texas and south Texas. How far do mountain lions travel in their life if there's a certain distance, and how far can they travel, let's say, even in a day? Well, they, uh, I don't know the answer to that, to the, to the last part, but uh, a male's territory can be up to, uh, to 400 square miles, which is huge. The uh, reason that they are expanding their territory is because their population is increasing, which is a good thing. Um, that's what we like to see, right? So um, the, the, when they're young, of course, the, the uh, kids stay with the mom until they're a certain age varies by different cat species, but eventually they have to go find their own territory. And so, you know, over time they have expanded, you know, there used to be mountain lions all over the United States. Uh, but as we expanded the population that narrowed their, their place where they could live, now they're starting to move out. They're not hunted uh, like they used to be. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good positive factors happening for that ability for them to move. Nice. And so is there anything else that you want to talk about, about this exhibit that you want to want to add? Well, um, I would, of course, encourage everyone to come see it. We've got a, a special offer right now. We have a King of Beast coloring book. You can download it uh, off of our Facebook page. And you will, uh, after you color it in, uh, which I'll show you the inside, you color in uh, all the pages and bring it back to the witty. You'll get two dollars off uh, your general admission ticket. This exhibit is included with general admission. Um, and when you come to the witty, of course, everyone must wear a face mask, and we will give you a stylus, witty stylus to use on our uh, interactives and all of our monitors. Um, we have plenty of hand sanitizing stations, so we have a lot of space at the witty. So you can spread out in social and physical distance throughout all of our galleries. Nice. Helen, thank you so much. And, you know, go ahead and mention to everybody again where the Witty is located. I know we have a lot of people who may be newer to San Antonio that may be tuning in. Where are you all located? Great. We are at 3801 Broadway, uh, right outside of downtown. Um, easy to get to. You can't miss us. And uh, also we're open seven days a week from 10 until 5. If we're on Sunday, we're open from noon until 5. Okay, excellent. And isn't there a way that people can also see some of the exhibits virtually right now? Is Did I hear that right, that on the website there's a way? Well, we do have on our website a, a special area called Witty Where You Are, and it is a series of web um, videos, excuse me, about different parts of the museum. We have everything from dinosaur videos to health and wellness to Texas Wild. Co really covers all of the, the witty collection. And we've got some activities you can download and do at home that go along with those witty videos. It's called Witty Where You Are. Nice. Well, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be sure to check that out too. And remind everybody again just one more time about the coloring book and the deal that you have going on before we uh, wrap things up here. Yes, thank you. So it's, it's the King of Beasts coloring book. Uh, you can download it off of our Facebook page. And it is it gets you $2 off general admission. You just uh, get your colors out, color in all the different cats, and bring it back and come see them in person. Hey, that's a great idea because right now a lot of people are staying at home. Uh, so to be able to, to have something to do, but first of all, just something to do at home and then somewhere to go to show it off and then check it out in person. That's a great idea, guys. Exactly. We'd love to see, love to see the talented Kellery. Excellent. Well, Helen, thank you so much. Uh, again, the Woody Museum, this is our third time that we've had you all on. We're looking forward to checking out even more exhibits here as we head throughout the next few weeks. Great. We'll see you again. All right. Thank you so much, Helen.
Thank you. So guys, a lot of really cool exhibits to check out at the Woody Museum there. Be sure to go check them out. You can check out some of the stuff that they have on their website too. And don't forget to download that coloring book from the Facebook page. That way you get $2 off admission when you go check it out. Now don't forget, we're going to continue our Cloudy with the Change of Learning segment every day, Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Tomorrow, we're going to go check out the recycling plant with the city. Should be a lot of fun. But for now, we're going to go ahead and sign off here. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.